Welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Pen Resurrection Sunday video. I've been restoring so many Parker Vacuumatics and Parker 51 Vacuumatics because I bought a relatively expensive tool from the Inky Nib called the Parker Vac Extractor Tool. My justification for making such an investment in a tool has been that I could buy up dead Vacuumatics for cheap, restore them, and sell them for more money eventually making the tool pay for itself. It seemed logical, at least it was a good excuse to explain the purchase to my wife. But I ran into a snag. I'm loving every pen that I'm restoring, and I'm getting nervous about having to part with some of them, any of them. I will be having a vintage fountain pen sale soon though, perhaps at the end of the summer. It will be very difficult to make the decision of which pens are in the sale and which I simply must keep. One of the most recently resurrected pens that I cannot part with is this 1935 Parker Vacuumatic Lockdown Filler in Burgundy Pearl. Not only is it drop dead gorgeous, it writes like a dream. And even though I consider it a fragile antique, I'm writing with it a lot, and it sits in a place of honor on my desk. Well, today I have a partner for it because I just resurrected this 1938 Parker Vacuumatic Lockdown Filler in Green Pearl. I didn't think it was possible, but this pen now writes better than the Burgundy Pearl. So join me as I show you how I brought this 85-year-old pen back from the dead right now. <music> And here is the newly restored Parker Vacuumatic in all of its glory. I want to show you some video I took of the pen before I started working on it, then some time-lapse video of the process, and then I'll talk about its parts and features, show some measurements, and then do a writing sample. So here's what it looked like when I got it. So before I try to resurrect this fountain pen from the dead, I thought we'd look at what condition it's in first before I have at it. So this is a 19 let's see we can find the imprint there it is parker vacuumatic this one's made in canada and there's the date code right there it says an eight dot so that's the uh, third quarter of 1938 it's not 1948 because of this style of a uh, fountain pen it has these lovely stacked celluloid designs in the end finials both ends uh, three stripes the Parker arrow clip and what's telling about this one it is a lockdown filler but it feels like there's a sack in there it's just not behaving all that well but because it's a lockdown filler it's pre-war and so that's a 1938 rather than 1948 we unscrew the cap and here's the nib two-toned gold arrow clip Parker and the ebonite feed it's got some pretty old ink in there vacuumatic registered trademark it should say made in Canada and a date code on the bottom of that nib the section has some pretty deep gouges in it there so I'm gonna to have to sand those out and then there are some wear marks of course for a pen this age throughout the barrel that I'm gonna to have to try to get out there's a good gap between there I don't know what that's about but some good wear marks a few deep gouges the clip looks in good shape so does the end finial the cap has some deeper gouges on it as well there especially on this side there and we'll polish up those rings there's no chips which is excellent and no signs of cracking not all sections come out this easily but this one did it took a little bit of effort there's some kind of a sealant right there like a gasket that someone put in there silicone seal of some sort and there's the breather tube and the end of the feed so i'm gonna knock that out we're gonna soak all this to make sure that uh, all the ink is out of there and that's got some ink staining on it as well so we'll clean out that barrel let's take the end pieces off i want to polish that clip up sometimes it's a good idea 
to put a little bit of a card under that clip as you turn it to keep from introducing new scratches as we go around it's fairly loose now there we go keep all our parts together clip pull out the breather tube and i'll knock that nib out there's our cap now the blind cap has a little finial on it as well so i can take that off and polish up that gold plated ring separately now let's go at this filling mechanism i'll take my vacuumatic extraction tool from the inky nib it has a I'll call it here it fits over those threads let me tighten that down we can unscrew the vac system sometimes this takes a little bit of heat to get that moving I've already had it off once and you can see that there is a sack there and that's a modern pellet so this is a sack replacement and it looks uh, in pretty good shape so this pen was previously restored there and there's our lockdown filler in lock mode give it a twist and you can see how it retracts yeah that's getting hung up in there so i have to work on seeing what's hanging that up it might be slightly bent these were fairly fragile they replaced these with the speed line filler so i'll have to see whether i can fix that it's snagging right there and now for some video of the restoration process so i was able to knock the nib and feed out of the section the nib as i suspected has a date code on it registered trademark made in canada and an 8 for 1938 and that nib's in pretty good shape this is without polishing so we'll polish that up the feed's in excellent shape as well i've soaked this but i'm going to brush it with a toothbrush and then polish it up to make that ebonite shine and then we're going to fix that scratch on the section but i also repaired the problem with the pump it was uh snagging right there uh, because it was a bit bent so i took some pliers to that little bend right there just to squeeze it a little bit and now it's sliding very nicely and that sack is in good shape so we'll keep that sack on there and reinstall it And here is the cap all polished up. The clip installed. I even polished that. There were some gouges in that top finial jewel. Got all the gouges out. And it's looking very nice. Now we'll do the same thing with the body. So let's look at the pen now. And then I'll show you how it writes. In 1933, Parker felt they had to replace the pen that had made Parker famous around the world. The Duofold which was then 12 years old. The depression of 1929 had cut into their business as it had most businesses around the world. Parker had invested $125,000 and five years of research to develop what eventually became the Parker Vacuumatic Pump Filler from the design they purchased from university professor Dahlberg in 1925. They worked with the plastics company DuPont to develop the striped celluloid that was originally turned out of solid rods. You can tell the early celluloid that was drilled out of a solid rod from the later celluloid that was a flat material turned on a mandrel by the pearlescent stripe you see. This is the early type from a rod. You can see it's pearlescent on one side and then it's dark. So it's offset by 180 degrees. Whereas the later celluloid, like this one in golden pearl, is pearlescent all the way around because this was wrapped 
around a mandrel. The pen was originally called the Golden Arrow in 1932, then called the Vacuum Filler, and finally marketed as the Parker Vacuumatic in 1933. The pen had an arrow clip designed by the New York designer Joseph Platt, which became synonymous with Parker since that time. The first generation of Vacuumatics had the lockdown twist Vacuumatic filler. You remove the blind cap, give the brass knob on the end of the spring-filled aluminum tube a twist, and that rod pops out. And then you pump it while you're immersing the nib in the ink until you don't hear any more bubbles, and the pen is full. Then you give the rod one more push, keeping the nib over the ink, of course, and you twist it until it's closed, and then replace the blind cap. By 1937, they had redesigned the aluminum tube to remove the locking mechanism, which required the blind cap to be enlarged for the second generation vacuumatic. There's the longer, no longer locking mechanism. It has the aluminum tube and the spring inside and the brass cap on the end of the tube, requiring the longer blind cap. And they called this model the Speedline Filler. So this one you merely immerse in the ink, give it a few pumps until you don't hear any more bubbles, put the blind cap back on, and you're ready to write. Parker felt this was a more efficient and easier to use filling system, and I agree. By 1942, aluminum and brass were needed for the war effort, and Parker changed the filler again. And the third generation has a rod made of celluloid instead of aluminum and brass. Sometimes the evolution of a pen model isn't always for the better. By the time the third generation vacuumatics arrived, gone were the big beautiful striped celluloid end finials and the striped celluloid sections. And by 1948 the vacuumatic was retired and gone was the transparent striped celluloid as the 1941 Parker 51 had taken hold of the market. The vacuumatic pump filler was originally the filling system in the Parker 51, but it was replaced with the aerometric filling system the year Parker retired the vacuumatic in 1948. I hope you can see why I treasure these 1930s and 40s Parker vacuumatics. For a brief time, Parker made a jewel of a fountain pen with gorgeous shimmering celluloid, art deco stylings, and an easy to use filling system that accommodates an incredible amount of ink. Just in case a pen designer is listening to me, why not make a vacuumatic with a transparent pearlescent striped acrylic using modern materials and engineering? Wingsung has already created a modern vacuumatic pump mechanism in the Wingsung 601. This is my flighter, and it works very well indeed. I think it would be awesome to see a vacuumatic filler in a swirling acrylic or primary manipulation style acrylic. And I'm looking at you, Zhilong Su, who a couple of years ago created this vacuumatic style pump mechanism on this experimental limited model. I think we could use something in a pen BBS acrylic in this style, don't you? And let's take a look at this nib. This is a two-tone 14 karat gold Parker Aero nib with a black ebonite feed. The section on this pen is black ebonite, unlike the burgundy pearl, which has the striped celluloid section. I understand this was a peculiarity of the Canadian vacuumatics from this period. The cap posts very nicely and very securely and makes the pen really nicely balanced in the hand. And here is another thing I noticed that's different in the Canadian pen. Listen to how crystalline the sound of this celluloid is compared to the 1935 from the US. Here's the Canadian one. And here's the US one. Interesting, the difference. I don't know the various types of celluloid, but that sounds like crystal to me. And now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the 1938 Parker Vacuumatic in green pearl celluloid. And it has a 14 karat gold. Uh, it's hard to tell, but I'm going to call it a medium fine. And let's check the wetness. 
I'm just thrilled with this wet juicy pen and it is a smooth beautiful and this is what really stunned me look at the flex in this nib with very little pressure at all let's do a close-up of this and show how that really nice soft nib it's not a flex nib so you can flex it but I wouldn't push it but it gives you a nice soft feeling and a very vintage writing experience look at that and the ink is of course Waterman's Serenity Blue awesome look at that goodness me it's like Niagara Falls and the flexibility of this nib is the first thing that actually struck me even without much pressure just normal writing it has tons of character I worked on this nib for quite a while because the tip was bent up slightly like it had been dropped on its head I took a good amount of time with my nib smoothing tool and my plastic spudger to sort of iron out the wrinkle and get those tines aligned I had no idea how it would write or if it would write when I filled the pen for the first time but when it wrote like this I instantly fell in love with this pen it's just so expressive there is a little feedback but very very smooth and wet and look at that the pen just coaxes flourishes and more interesting character in my writing and the line this nib makes is 0.5 millimeters which is a western fine but of course it's hard to judge because you give it any amount of pressure and it thickens up very quickly or a Japanese uh, fine to medium on my Richard Binder line width chart which you can find linked in the description below but of course when you give it a push you have to go slowly with it because it will railroad but let's see look at that it's not railroading at all as soon as I said that and that line ends up being around 0.9 millimeters which makes it a western double broad so very very nice nib and for our quote and for some reverse writing now well, I took the opportunity and the liberty of smoothing it out in reverse as well and it is a little bit drier a little bit drier but very smooth so this is now an extremely versatile nib and for some quick writing yeah that feed has no difficulty keeping up at all and this is very wet so what are my thoughts on this resurrection well I'm just thrilled with it to be fair the pen already had a working vacuumatic pump with a new sack installed but the nib was not in writable condition and I was able to not only fix the nib to the point where it's now one of my favorite writing experiences I also got the pen looking very shiny and almost new in condition the only thing that doesn't make this pen perfect is the fact that the section is black instead of being the gorgeous green striped celluloid because of the Canadian plant what garbage well what do you expect they're Canadian I blame Canada Not even a real country anyway and I mentioned this Parker vacuumatic in a previous video this is a 1946 Parker vacuumatic that was successfully resurrected but shortly after the restoration one of the tines broke off and when the vac pump on this silver vacuumatic broke I swapped it out for the one that was in this because the nib didn't work and I have a new vacuumatic pump on the way from pen tooling that is all in solid brass so I'm looking looking forward to that and I'll do a video that shows the modern vacuumatic and its installation in this pen I was planning on fixing this nib and grinding it down but one of my viewers complained when I clipped the tip off of this Parker VS 14 karat gold nib which was horribly broken and I ground it into a really nice 
stub that I love writing with this is just like glass but they said I shouldn't be doing that to this gold nib because now there is no tipping material just gold so while I was visiting my friend and nibmeister Jack Hernandez the other day I showed him this nib and asked him whether grinding a gold nib down to make it work was the wrong thing to do while I was describing the issue of the tipping or no tipping on gold which I swear was like 30 seconds long he put this nib to his Dremel and made it write like a dream. I was just stunned. It just writes beautifully. No tipping material. And his comment was, well, none of the nibs in the early days had tipping material on them. They were all gold. Now all I have to do is install the new vac pump and this pen will have come back from the dead twice. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can also join as a member of my channel for just 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you. for watching and that's all she wrote.